Nope, that's not the recording software. That is the game just lagging. I wanted to start with Beyond the Wire because it is the most infamous. It came out in 2020 and it completely flopped straight away. It looks like we can actually build some sandbags here. That's a kind of cool addition. By the way, if this recording looks completely blown out, the game didn't actually look like that. The game just doesn't really register as a proper title according to Shadowplay. So it looks completely blown out because it thinks it's recording the desktop. The resolution scale doesn't work. The graphics are awful. It runs so badly. It is stuck at 60 even though VSync is not on. And what the hell is going on here? Guys, seriously, I wonder if I can... Is there... Okay, well, Friendly Fire definitely is on. I'm playing with bots because, well, the servers are dead. There is there is no one else in this game at all, whatsoever. I'm, there's, I think there's a hundred bots in here, but that's all there is. As you can see, it's just completely... But what the... <laughs> there's just people on fire walking around. Beyond the Wire almost died instantly, and I think I can see why now. The game is so badly made. It had a good concept, but... There just isn't really any substance to it. It was multiplayer only, so now I guess we have to play against bots if we want any sort of gameplay on it. I think there are a few clan events, but other than that, as a public player, you're going to get nothing out of this title. Oh god, there's a guy over there, I think. Okay, well, I think we're at the front line now, so we're going to start taking a few pot shots. The controls are a little bit messed up. Sensitivity is way too high. I've tried to turn it down. It, it didn't really work. As I said, this game is very poorly made. Oh my god, there's a man with a knife. Never mind, he's stuck. Good shot from me, though. Very good shot from me. You see, Offworld Industries, who make or publish squads and post scriptum, release this, and it just isn't even slightly up to their standard. Squad is such an incredible title in terms of quality, and this doesn't even come close. Graphically, it looks awful. Mechanically, it's really bad. The actual just gameplay design doesn't really feel satisfying. Sound design is pretty terrible as well. Some things sound good. Some things sound awful, most namely explosions. I can't even shoot out this window because my gun just gets put down every time I walk close to it. If I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be completely brutal here. I'm glad this game died. <laughs> Beyond the Wire is a terrible title, but it's just sad because it had so much potential. So much. I think actually they carried on updating it. I think there's still some stuff and weapons coming out according to their Twitter, which I do follow. There's another guy on fire over there. What is going on? I know these are just bots, but surely they shouldn't just be running around on fire. Apparently someone's been dropping incendiary bombs all over the World War and Battlefield. But as you can see, the gunfire off in the distance sound horrific. But my actual gun that I'm using does sound pretty good, the Model 1886. And it is a pretty nice sounding weapon. But anything that isn't my personal weapon just sounds like a very poorly made and low quality title. Oh my god, there's a... I mean, I do like the blood splatters that come off it. It seems that hitboxes are a little bit off as well, since every time I shoot, it sometimes hits, sometimes doesn't, no matter where it... Oh god. Well, that's beyond the wire for you. I, can I play something better, please? Let's play something a little bit nicer. A bit better on the eyes and, well, the ears. The guns actually sound good. This is Isonzo. It came out in September of 2022, yet it's not even a year old. And whilst already the player base is kind of lacking with about 100 concurrent players at all times, there are still bots you can get your hands on. And the bots are a bit more, well, a bit more competent than Beyond the Wire, but that's not exactly saying much. They still run into things, but at least they're decent at shooting. The game looks gorgeous. It feels well made and very satisfying. Shooting people from across the streets. Oh my Jesus Christ, lad. You will often find yourself being shot out of complete nowhere. Like they will just hit you from a million... Ma my God. A million miles away and you'll have no idea what's coming on this is a different map by the way i decided to switch onto something new and uh oh god there are a few enemy emplacements up here isonzo did pretty well in terms of reviews the actual player base as mentioned didn't really stick around but i think that's just down to the fact that there isn't a load of content within the game there's a few maps and that's about it a decent amount of customization but nothing on the scale that a true multiplayer only title really needs I swear, okay, there is one more guy here that I keep missing. It's all right, we'll get him eventually, boys. We'll, we'll get him eventually. 
There we go. As you can see, I want to play as a sniper, but I can't actually use a scope because someone else is using it. You can have one person with a scope. That's that's really quite annoying. But the maps feel big as well. They have this more linear progression than anything else where you're going from point to point with the generic capture zones, but it kind of unlocks as time goes on. So you're focused in different areas, meaning that the smaller player count doesn't really matter alongside the bots because you're only focusing on one small area at a time anyway. Then once that bit's been captured or not captured, the next part opens up immersiveness is a massive factor of this as well the smoke looks great the mustard gas looks great the explosions sound beefy and all in all it's a very high quality game it's just a shame that content is severely lacking i should probably heal up here actually and then take that guy around the corner oh my jesus christ lad okay let's get inside the church because this is not a safe place to be it might be sacrilege killing people in the house of God, but I need to take cover. I'm sure God would understand. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, I did think he was someone else. I did think he was someone else. And I don't feel entirely safe here. This feels a little... Well, I think I've just had my point proven. Oh, uh, well, this is a little bit quiet. Some would say all quiet on the west. Okay, that is a terrible joke. This is whole fascinations of war front lines. And you might have worked out it's a little bit dead. I have jumped into a server with zero people. There are two servers. There's no one on either of them. And, well, there was a lot going on for this mod. It's kind of an expansion to a bigger game. A game that is still popular to this day. But unfortunately, I can't kill chickens in it. And I think that was the main reason it died. While we can't actually play it, let me explain the surroundings for this. Whole Fascinations of War came out in 2017-ish time. It was a Napoleonic Wars line battle game off the back of Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars DLC. Clans got together, they fought in ship battles and of course in land battles and sieges. Then the developers Anvil Studios decided to bring out a full World War One expansion, offering all the nations, offering different weapons, armors, and it is pretty cool. Machine guns, rifles, artillery, that kind of stuff. I actually really enjoyed it, however it did kind of die after a few weeks, and it didn't really stick around, I guess that's kind of a theme with World War 1 games. But it was very popular, because whole fascinations of war was incredibly popular, yet it was built upon an engine that was meant for the Napoleonic Wars and recreating line battles in that way. So moving it into World War 1, where the gameplay was very different, where trench warfare was now being introduced, and where standing in lines and waiting to be shot was not really an option when the enemy had MGs. I think it was just this matter of trying to translate a game and mechanics made for Napoleonic Wars into a World War I setting, hence why Holdfast Front Lines is no longer really playable. We can't play World War I FPS games without talking about this beauty. This is Verdun, and perhaps the one that started it all. It is the oldest out of all the games that I'm going to be playing today, released in 2014 by Black Mill Games. These guys went on to make, well, Isonzo and Tannenberg as we'll be getting onto a little bit later, but Verdun being the first and I think probably one of the best out of the series, it inspired a whole host of new World War One titles, FPS or otherwise. Now, this is one of the most recent maps that we were playing. Recent, I say, it was released a couple of years after the main release of the game. I, I did not mean to just put my gas mask on there. Uh, it's a little bit embarrassing. Fighting throughout the tunnels though, it is absolutely terrifying as you will find people just pop out of nowhere. Most of the guns with this are trying to be as authentic and realistic as possible. Because of it, it is one shot kill on the whole unless you're using some sort of pistol. Now, it is all bolt action stuff. You're going to find very few automatic or even semi-automatic rifles or weaponry. There are MGs that I mean, that's what you can hear rat -a on above us there. There are grenades and, of course, gas attacks can be called in. You can play as officers or commanders that can call in things like mortar strikes or artillery, which is a lot of fun. But all in all, I think Verdun is one of the more solid titles in the World War One FPS genre. Oh my god. Oh god. Well, that was not exactly the way I expected it to go. But hey, <laughs> we've now been pushed back outside. And that's where we get to show the push-pull mechanics. You see, in this game, it was set out a little bit differently in terms of the game modes. It wasn't just everybody running and gunning, no matter what you might see here. 
there are front lines that you have to attack and defend push forward and pull back now the game is still pretty empty there's only about 50 players concurrently playing at all one time but it is full up with bots much like isonzo so you're still able to get a decent amount of play time the bots aren't great much better than beyond the wire and you're gonna get a good amount of kills but there will be times where you do just get sniped out of absolute nowhere in terms of mustard gas it is terrifying it works very effectively and you do have to put your gas mask on there are a lot of other maps mostly based around trench maps but in terms of variety i think verdun suffers a little bit there you're mostly playing in the dirt and you know not in a fun way more like getting shot by some germans or the french if that's more your thing oh nice shot Oh, there's someone. Oh, there's a guy here. Yeah, he got da -da 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 right in the face. Battlefield 1 is the classic. I mean, coming out in 2016, it was where DICE was really pushing the envelope and trying to do something different with the Battlefield series. You know, now that they're saying, guys, the next Battlefield is going to be amazing. It's going to be completely different. Well, this was where they actually did do something different. Kind of. Let me just slaughter a few men in the back here. Not like my usual Saturday nights. But you see, at the time with Infinity Warfare coming out and people not exactly enjoying the Call of Duty games, that was where the series was on its last legs and probably the last hurrah before the remakes, DICE decided that they wanted to do something better. People were bored of modern day shooters, so they went back into history. This alternate reality history granted, but it's still World War I and whilst I have always argued that Battlefield 1 is the least World War I game ever existed, except from, I don't know, maybe The Last of Us, this still fits within the genre that we're going for today. And I still love it. It still looks gorgeous. The sound design is incredible. It still plays like a Battlefield game. It has that same scale. But it is almost the polar opposite of the spectrum to what you can expect from, I don't know, Verdun, sitting in trenches, being ordered when to attack and when to defend. But I think people still love it to this day. I mean, getting some gameplay for this video, this was the easiest to jump into a server. Nearly all of these games are completely dead, except for Battlefield 1 that still has a very, very positive and good fan base. And, uh, oh my god, what's going on in here? I love the destruction within this game, by the way. It is probably one of the best parts about a battlefield and something that I wish was just implemented into every other game. Being able to head into a building and then get it smashed up to pieces by artillery shells or tanks that haven't quite seen you. Oh, okay. There's some embarrassing shooting going on here, so please bear with me. But at least you can look at the beautiful lighting, the really nice gun design or the sound. I mean, it sounds pretty nice, even if it is a little bit quiet. The recent Battlefield games have left a lot to be desired, and I think the franchise not necessarily being on its way out, but definitely a, a decline and has been for quite some time. Battlefield 1 was really the last point where it was an overwhelmingly positive experience and reception from the fan base. Battlefield 5, people going back now saying they love it, but this was really the last point where everybody agreed this was a good Battlefield game. Even with the single player, with the war stories, it was never quite as good as it was in this title, and they could have been more fleshed out, I do agree with that, but it was a different direction for Battlefield single player. A single player experience that had never really been their strong suit, but they tried at least to make it that way. So I will always hold this title as probably the most successful World War 1 shooter of all time, not necessarily the most authentic though. I would, I would, I would probably give that to 1980s school playgrounds. Oh my god, somebody needs to turn down that MG. Can we put some sort of muffler or silencer on it? I've got to get away from this. This is ridiculous. Jeez. I think that sums up Tannenberg in a nutshell. Releasing in 2017 in early access on Steam, it was the first sequel to Verdun. Going into the Eastern Front, playing as Russians and Germans and fighting in much more open terrain. And that was its biggest selling point. Moving away from the muddy European trench warfare, going into something more of a beautiful, tranquil, deforested area with beautiful sun, granted, and really nice lighting. I, and I always like to point that out when I play Tannenberg. A lot of satisfying shooting has come back with bolt-action rifles, now with 
nice Moses, that kind of stuff. But it is just as terrifying and as bloody as ever. The game still lacks content, much like Verdun and Isonzo, its later counterpart that we played at the start of this video. But within it, it still has some really good gameplay, some beautiful mechanics and satisfying gunplay as well, which is always important for an FPS game. However, you will find yourself being shot out of complete nowhere in some of the most infuriating ways. I think that's probably the biggest downfall of this series. And Tannenberg is kind of the forgotten brother of both Verdun and Isonzo. It had decent reviews, nothing all that special, but in terms of the series, I think Isonzo was kind of the culmination of both Verdun and Tannenberg together in terms of quality and the series in general. But that was every World War One FPS I could find. God, I really hope there aren't any more because I'm getting tired. I need to sleep.